How do you feel great on vacation? Like really good? Easy. You go to Aruba. You'll spend your time relaxing on cool white sand beaches and floating in healing blue water. You'll immerse yourself in natural wonder and find your center on an island where things move at your speed. You won't just feel great. You'll feel relaxed, renewed, and ready for life. That's the Aruba effect. Plan your trip at aruba.com. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2461. The Do's and Don'ts of Permanent Fat Loss by Leah Genders of leahgendersfitness.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Hey there, happy Saturday. I hope your weekend is off to a great start. And welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, or OHD, where I act as your narrator of popular health and fitness blogs and always provide my commentary at the end. And don't forget, we have a bunch of shows covering topics. Just search for Optimal Living Daily in your podcast app to find them. Now I'm gonna keep the intro nice and short, so let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. The Do's and Don'ts of Permanent Fat Loss by Leah Genders of leahgendersfitness.com I really wanted to call this post The Secret to Permanent Fat Loss, but that sounds so spammy, right? The truth is, it is no secret. It's just not that sexy. It's not the latest fat-melting supplement, the magic shake, or the latest hardcore exercise program. It's not a secret. It's a lifestyle. For years and years, I was great at losing fat. I did it so many times, I'd rather not recount how many. I knew exactly how to get the fat off. I just didn't know how to keep it off. The biggest mistake I made was making fat loss a singular focus. It's all I thought about. It's all I cared about. I didn't fit my fat loss goals into my lifestyle. I changed my whole life to fit in my fat loss goals, and that wasn't sustainable. Once I lost the weight, I lost the focus, and the weight came back on. Here's what I learned from my own fat loss journey and keeping the weight off for good. 1. Don't be goal-oriented. Say what? It sounds counterintuitive to say you shouldn't be oriented to your goals, but hear me out. It's great to have a fat loss goal, but it shouldn't be a singular focus. It's fine to have a number in the back of your head, but place your focus on the habits you need to build into your life. What are you doing daily to support your goals? Two, do build healthy habits into your lifestyle that will support your goals. Focus on the permanent lifestyle changes and habits needed to meet your goal rather than the goal itself. Focus on the journey because there is no end. You will find that your goals will continue to change and evolve over time. Three, don't diet. Seriously, a diet implies a short-term way of eating. You can't be on a diet forever, but you can eat a healthy diet forever. See the difference? Diet as a verb implies something that you do short-term. Forget the low-carb or low-fat diet. Diets fail. Permanent lifestyle changes win. Four, do choose whole, unprocessed foods most of the time. Focus on making healthier choices most of the time. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to make the best choice possible with what you are given. Try to focus on choosing whole, unprocessed foods most of the time. Occasional indulgences are okay. Enjoy life, family meals, and time with friends without guilt. But learn to make healthy meals at home. Pack your lunch and meal prep healthier choices for the week. What you do most of the time matters more than what you do occasionally. When healthy eating becomes just a part of your lifestyle, it ceases being a diet that you can be on or off. Five, don't punish yourself with exercise. Yes, exercise is important. I think everyone should exercise to build a healthy heart, a healthy body, and a longer life. Exercise is not a punishment for having a body you don't love. Learn to love the body you have while working to improve. Don't exercise to burn off a big meal or to pay penance for an indulgence. It's a mindset. If you view exercise as punishment, it's harder to find the joy in movement. No one loves punishment. Six, do move more. Move. It doesn't have to be a structured bodybuilding style workout and you don't have to train to run a marathon. Just move. Do the active things you enjoy. Get outside. 
ride bikes with your kids, take a brisk walk with your spouse or dog, take a Zumba or boot camp class with friends. Try some different fitness activities to discover something you love. Some people love running, like me. Some people love weightlifting. But some people hate both of those. It's okay. Maybe it's yoga. Maybe it's CrossFit. Maybe it's running with your dog or hiking. Learn how to make exercise a daily habit. Find your thing and just do it because if you try to force yourself to do something that you hate, it won't last long term. It has to be sustainable. 7. Don't try to lose weight. Losing weight is easy. Stop drinking water and the scale will probably read a couple pounds lighter. And by the way, don't do this. But there's a big difference between water weight loss and fat loss. The worst case scenario is muscle loss. You may show a lower number on the scale, but if you're losing muscle instead of fat, then you're hurting your metabolism, which makes it harder to keep the weight off permanently. And eight, do work to lose fat. If you want a lean, fit physique, then your primary focus should be on fat loss instead of weight loss. Eat a healthful diet with plenty of protein, do cardio exercise that elevates your heart rate, and work in some muscle building or maintaining exercises like yoga, bodyweight exercises, boot camps, and so on. It doesn't have to be 60 minutes a day for six days a week. Just work in one or two full body resistance training exercises for 15 minutes a day to help build and maintain muscle. In order to achieve permanent fat loss, the goal should be to work on building sustainable lifestyle habits. Make healthier food choices most of the time. Fit in some exercise that you enjoy and work on finding that balance between your goals and your lifestyle. If you haven't picked up on it yet, sustainability is the key. Anyone can power through 12 weeks of a hardcore program to quickly lose weight. But if you don't continue those activities after the 12 weeks, the weight will probably creep back on. It's better to lose weight slowly over time so you can maintain it for a lifetime. I monitor my weight to keep myself in check, and if I find the scale creeping up a bit like I did over the holidays, I always first examine my habits. What am I doing differently on a daily basis? Did any bad habits slip in? I evaluate and then adjust. I don't freak out about the scale or weight gain because I know that when I sustain healthy habits, my weight will stabilize to a healthy number. You just listened to the post titled The Do's and Don'ts of Permanent Fat Loss by Leah Genders of leahgendersfitness.com and I'll be right back with my commentary. When you're hiring, it feels amazing to finally close out a job search. But what if you could get rid of the search and just match? You can with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. One of the things I love about Indeed is that it filters out incompatible applicants. So when you're hiring, the process is much faster and you only have to consider applicants that are already likely to be a great fit. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash health. Just go to indeed.com slash health right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash health. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Earlier this week, during my commentary, in fact, I talked about where to start when it comes to changing our habits. I completely agreed with the author of that day's article that keeping track of your behaviors is one of the best ways to get started. For example, if someone's goal is to eat more nutritious foods, writing down what they eat a few days a week can help them realize where changes in their diet need to be made. If someone's goal is to move more, Tracking their steps can be a real eye-opener. But what happens when we've been doing well with our new habits and then start to backslide? We start, let's say, overindulging more often again, or maybe the number on the scale is starting to creep back up. Well, the solution in this case is actually the same. Go back to tracking your behaviors. Go back to writing down what you eat, 
how many steps you've taken, and so on. Many studies have found that this method is one of the best for not only starting the habit change process, but sticking to it too. All right, that'll do it for today. I hope you have a great weekend if you're listening in real time, and I'll see you back here tomorrow as usual where your optimal life awaits.